It always helps to turn the microphone on. Yes. Karen, you didn't remind me. <laughs> like, how do you? <laughs> <laughs> blame, blame. Sorry do we about still? That. Do we have audio now? Well, what does it show at the bottom there? That little. Oh yes, we're, I see. We're we're so. broadcasting it. Oh, absolutely. We're, we're redlining. Okay. We're close to redlining. Yeah. That's because oh. I was leaning over to it. Okay. So, <clears throat> try again. <laughs> Good Close morning. <laughs> This is Karen Pittman, one of our, I was going to say fearsome mods. What, what's the expression? Fe I forgot what they said. Intrepid. <laughs> yeah. So, and I, did you bring your green sword? Did I? Did I, I left it, I left <laughs> it back but in Austin. Isn't there a crown? I forget what the symbols are. No, there's are. a green okay. sword. A green sword and a crown or something. So. The thing about, one other thing, Karen, of course, is we're logged in on this computer as me in order to be able to stream. So Karen mm -hmm. is actually at the keyboard typing. So it's not me, whatever she says, it's, uh, it's not me, lies, lies, lies. She's typing as my name, mm -hmm. but of course, she's the one running it here. So. Welcome to Japan again. Thank you so Good. much. It's I get such confused. a pleasure to you be know, here. Obviously, I'm not meeting her. You, she's been here for a couple of days, so, mm -hmm. so we're not meeting her for the first time. And I did get confused as to when you were here before. So you, when you stayed here for like a few weeks working, that was actually pre yeah, that was spring uh, yeah. in 20, oh, 2019. Then, yeah. then did we do this? You must have come down in the stream. We must yes, have yes, because you so, remember so. like when you were like doing something that would squeak, I did this. Do I, <laughs> and you're like, do I quit that. <laughs> do, I, do I remember this? I forget what you were doing. <laughs> why, why is it that women always remember something that happened like 25 years ago and guys never do? Is, is it a thing or? Sorry, I don't know. No, I don't remember that, Karen. I'm sorry. So. I remember printmaking stuff. John Becker says we should have a formal introduction and an explanation of why well, she is in Japan now. Okay, the formal introduction was this is Karen Pittman, one of our mods. Oh, you, we're using real names because Karen is okay with this. Yeah, I'm fine with that. that. So, so. I'm Vivid KP yeah. normally in the stream. As for why she's in Japan, I will just actually, that's it, over to you. I'm oh, gonna, yeah. Why am I going to explain why you're in Japan? I'm I, gonna get I signed up for this uh, international Mokohanga conference, which is going to be in Echizen in uh, a few days. And, you know, if I'm going to come to Japan, I want to not, like, make it quick. <laughs> So uh, I excuse me, Dora. I have no idea where to zoom in here. Can oh you yeah, give me I'll some you guidance. Yeah, you you're me? pretty centered right now. But I gotta once, once you zoom, you might want to. Now you. I'm you're, gonna have to go. You're on the low. This way, right? Yes. And then. If you want to zoom more, you're pretty good. You just you just guide me in, ma'am. You're on the kind of lower right quadrant of the screen now, and you could zoom more if you're going to be doing fine fine detail. I'm gonna work on this hair. Yeah. Zoom more, and you're in the, you're at the bottom. Now you're in the center. Yeah, that looks We're good. We're good to go for a while. That looks okay. great. Let me know. Thank yeah. you. Sorry to interrupt. You. Excuse me. Oh um, yeah, so I'm gonna go to the conference and I'm gonna try to do some hiking and sketching and uh, hiking up there in the conference area at Chizen. Uh, probably hiking around Nagano, and then I'm gonna go to the Kiso Valley and do some hiking there. Um, you mean Nakazendo? The Nakasendo. So are you being sort of a traditionalist calling it Kiso or what's the... Well, I'm, you know, the, the Nakasendo goes through the Kiso Valley, but oh. there's other hikes oh, okay, that you can okay, do okay. there too. You mean Kiso as in just one segment of the road that used to be called the Nakasendo? Yeah, okay. it's like a, an area. It's a whole valley yeah. up there. And we're talking hiking as in mountain climbing and stuff? Or what? Oh, I don't know. No ropes. But the, you're, you're going to miss the cherries then, because up there must be still not, not ready for yeah, cherry blossoms. Yeah. Right? They're just ready to start here in Tokyo. Yeah. So I might see some in Echizen, or they may be done by then. Yeah. I don't know. That I don't know. I think it's way too soon for the Japan Seiko side, I think. But this year, nobody knows. It's okay. Yeah, I'm going to be in Echizen for like four days, so mm. it could happen. Is this your first time to go to one of those conferences? Yes. 
yeah, there are a lot of people that I've been um, following in Instagram, and I'm looking forward to meeting them in person. And I, I got to meet a couple of people yesterday that came by the shop. Yeah, yeah we've had a yeah. bunch of them come to us. So yeah, Cameron fun. Bailey and yeah. April Volmer. Yeah. How does she pronounce it? Volmer or Volmer? I, I, I'm sorry, I don't know. I just call her April. I don't know. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, they came by to say hi to Dave. Yeah, Cameron, the first them. time I've never met Cameron. April I've known for, for, for decades. Cameron Bailey I've never met before. He brought a whole bunch of prints that he'll be showing up there in Itches next week, so it's nice to meet him. And then Mike Lyon was here a couple of days ago. He and I have known each other again for, my God, you know, beginning of the internet, 1995, 1996, somewhere around there. Wasn't this block supposed to be done last week? Oh, jeez. <laughs> Give him a break. It is nuts here. You would not believe how many people are in Asakusa. You would not believe how many people are in Japan. Uh, and then in the shop. You know. Yeah, it took an hour to get through immigration, and it took an hour to get a ticket on the Skyliner to come over here. And it, I had to stand in line at all the elevators. There's a, just a lot of people here, a whole lot of people. It is the paper out? Yes, it is. I'm the only, it's only one printer up here today. It's Ishikawa-san, who I guess you haven't, you haven't met this time around, you know? I haven't seen her this time. She'll be coming in public upstairs while we're oh, on the screen cool. today. She's printing a... A koitsu landscape, uh, Aki no Miyajima. And she's almost finished, actually. So. Yeah, yeah, yesterday I got to see Rei chan and uh, Ayumi I'm, I'm here, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. No, Corinne, I'm, I'm not going to size paper again. Ever? Oh, you mean today? Oh, you today. Yeah, I think, I think <laughs> so. KG means, like, will I, while you're here, will I do it yeah, while I'm yeah, here? Yeah. No, but um, I'm going to take a papermaking workshop when I'm up at the conference. So I'm kind of excited about that. Oh, by the way, Dave, they mm -hmm. they sent an email asking if uh, they 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 the the work the papermaking workshop people uh, to me the, they sent part of the conference, right? Yeah, part yeah. of the conference. They sent an email to me about um, oh, you know, the paper that you make is going to take seven to ten days to dry, so you can't take it with you when you leave. Paper that you make is going to take seven to ten days, days to, to dry. dry. Yeah. So, do you want us to ship it to you, or do you want us to give you some paper that we made, and we'll just keep what you made? And so, I, I, I included a comment asking if they could like just ship it to Tokyo oh, to so arrive to by us, the fifteenth. Sure, 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 of course. Yeah. Of course, of course, so, yeah. it may show up here. Okay, you see what they're doing then is uh, you're going to make one sheet next, next you're gonna, another person's going to make one sheet, they're going to try and label them with each person. I think we're going to have two sheets. Okay, whatever, whatever, X sheets. number of sheets per person, yeah. the next person, next person, next person, next person. Yeah. The normal procedure for paper making is that the, the person dips the paper, stack, 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 stack. They then put the weights on it gently and during the night it slowly and gently, mm -hmm. water is seeped out of it, maybe a bit more present in the morning. Then the next morning the paper comes off the stack onto the drying boards. So the normal, typical procedure for a paper maker, it's dipped on day one and dried on day two. Mm -hmm. That's the normal procedure. I can't see leaving it longer. You don't wait seven days. I mean, it's got to be done the next day. So, but maybe they're in the middle of the conference, in the middle of the chaos. Uh, I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe they're just going to so do, the, do one day. Met club man, he was uh, mm -hmm. asking about the, the blog, and he said, he or she says, I'm not criticizing, just asking as he... He or she had thought it needed to be done last week, so. Oh yeah, no, I'm cool. I'm, I'm all right. No, 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 no. I'm not in any way bothered by. A, uh, I mean, I probably said this will be finished next time you see me. I think. John, what are you asking about? What are they going to do with it after you make it? Put it in a sauna. Oh, you're asking me the paper. Yeah. Why well, it would take seven days? I don't know. I don't know. No. I don't know. There's a couple of different ways to dry it, three different ways basically to dry it. The, the old, old, old traditional way, of course, is it goes on boards out in the sunshine. Mm -hmm. I don't that think, shouldn't take long. But I don't think they're doing it that way up there because uh, in, in Udatsu, the place you're going to be doing it, right where the, you're dipping the paper, if you look behind you, there is a cupboard with big wide doors and in the cupboard go the drying boards. You know, after the paper is, is uh, mm -hmm. squeezed that night, it will be laid onto the boards the next morning and the boards go into a drying cupboard. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's a warm air is going through it. There's a, there's a hot water boiler which the pipes go through the cupboard. Mm -hmm. There's no steam in the cupboard, but the hot, mm -hmm. the warm. like a radiator pipes, you mm -hmm. know, that's open and warm. Mm -hmm. And there's a gentle fan, so air goes through, warm air goes through, drying it out. The third way, is, of course, is on, on the hot plates, you know, the metal plate, like like you saws do when I did the yeah. thing with, with Anasan. Yeah. You know, so. 
Ivano Santa doesn't have one of those. And does Udatsa have one of those? I don't think so, unless it's hidden in the back room. I've never seen it there. So, so your paper will be dried in the cupboard, I believe. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. I wish I could muck around with that more, you know. I mean, people know our situation with the paper, and it would be fun for me to get up there and then try learning more about paper making. And, uh, and those people there, that, that place you're going to, the Udatsu Kogekan, they, they know what they're doing, you know. It's good fun. There are other tourist paper making experiences in the same town. There's one of the Papiras Khan. And they just give tourists a little tiny screen, like me and Ayano san did. Mm -hmm. one here, little tiny screen. They put leaves in it, and always doesn't it look pretty? And dip it, dip it, dip it. But yeah, that's a place you're going to be doing the actual, real process. Cool. The real I hope thing. I end up with real actual tools, real paper real that thing, is I mean, actually no, really usable. I mean, they're going to baby you about it. You know, rocking maybe that she will help you. What I have no idea. But that's the real material, the real tools, the real kozo, the real netty. Everything mm -hmm. is the real situation. Cool. So this is not a plate. Well. I mean, it's not it's not it's not playtime. It's mm -hmm. real things. It's sort of like what we tried to do with our printmaking experience here. Make it as close to the real experience as, as possible. So so I gave you a chance to get up there and do that. <laughs> Lingual logic. I think it's a joke. In the age of feudal Japan during peacetime, samurai warriors would hold up the paper to the sun and also blow on it non-stop until it dried. Some of them would die, even, from oxygen deprivation. This technique is known as boku wa o so wo tsui deru. I'm probably not saying that right. Boku, boku, wa, boku wa uso wo uso wo tsui deru. <laughs> Has our, has our stream now finally jumped the shark? <laughs> I <don't laughs> so, no. Was that our moment? <laughs> so, if you had left some spaces in, my pronunciation would have been better, where, Ella. Where, where's your ban hammer? <laughs> so. When did I become interested in printmaking? How did I learn? Hmm. So, um, let's get yeah, to I've always been interested in printmaking. And, you know, even as a kid, I made like lino cut stuff. My mom was an artist, and so I was exposed to all these different media. Um, and I, on my own, I did some lino attempts, kind of without much success, because I was, I was trying for the kind of transparency that you can get with water-based woodblock, but I was using oil-based material, and I mm -hmm. put a lot of extender in, and I made these prints, and the extender bled into the paper, and it was really mm -hmm. gross. Uh, so that didn't turn out too well. Um, but I did a, I was able to do a workshop with Annie Bissett in 2017. And that's when I started, and I just kept at it. Um, was that the workshop done in, in uh, not Austin, it was in uh, Santa Fe? It was in Fe? Santa Fe, Santa Fe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, April, was scheduled the lady to that you were talking, yeah, yeah, she was yeah, scheduled to do right. it, but she had, she had family reasons that made her have to find a substitute. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, yeah. Was how many years ago, I'm sorry? You said so, 2017, so seven 17. years ago. Right. Coming up seven years ago in the summer. Karen, you, we have some prints here, you know, it's, you could, a lot of these people only know you by mod name, but they haven't seen your work. Oh. There's some prints here, she's not going to volunteer to do this, so should I put some on the table here, or sure. are you going to show them there, or what? Oh, let's see, that would work. You it's might silly to talk about Karen with her, what she's doing, and not show some of the prints, so rather than... <clears throat> I'll probably need to zoom out some. I will certainly need to zoom out some, but I'll, too. I'll leave the camera... I'll leave it there until you get some there. print you, on, and You little, tell me... Oh, yeah. Karen, you feed to me whatever you want to show, because you're the one talking about it. So I will just simply... So here's a little... This is from a sketch I did in Tokyo, the, all the crows around here. Um, uh, you can zoom in just a little bit, because that one's small, and move it towards the light. Yeah, that's a good framing, and you can zoom some or hold it closer. That's good. Got shadows here, but whatever. Yeah. So. Uh, so totally Japanese tradition. Japanese washi on wood, water-based pigments, Japanese brushes, barons, the whole thing. The only thing not 
specifically Japanese about Karen's prints, we're not going to see kimonos and ladies and temple roofs and stuff like oh, that. Oh, no, no, no. But I don't it's see a that. Japanese <laughs> traditional technique. And actually, this one with the bird in the snow is the one that looks most Japanese, you know what? actually. It's, it's you know, a so. takeoff on uh, Koson Ohara, or is it mm, Ohara mm, Koson? Ohara Koson, yeah. Yeah, he did a crow in snow, mm. and it's sort of a takeoff. Mm. This, this guy's stolen somebody's uh, dumplings, I think. Oh, the crow, you mean? Yeah. <laughs> Karen, it's very tasteful, you know, very, very nicely done. You've got, to me, you know, you're pushing my buttons here in that a lot of people who are trying to do prints of this type, I mean, meaning mokuhanga, the Japanese type, they will slather pigments on and they don't care about the texture or tone or whatever. Mm -hmm. And Karen has taken the time and trouble, or it's, or it's her OCD or whatever, she wants to make this thing beautiful. She wants to see the technique. And that sounds like sort of a no-brainer, but there's lots of people out there who don't want to see the technique. They just want textures and tones and, and washes of color, whatever. I struggled with this because the wood is not great, and it has areas that tend to want to make darker splotches. Is, so it, is this plywood or, or chino plywood? Or oh, cherry? it's cherry. cherry. Yeah. But Ameri some American, American cherry. cherry from yeah. Your home. Okay. yeah, a lot of... I'll usually use American... I'll nearly always use American cherry for right. key blocks. Sometimes I'll use sugar <coughs> for color areas. But Do we have a gradation on the orange here? Yes, every little orange, every little dumpling has its own. Each gradation. one, there's Each three one gradations. Its, there's three, yeah. <laughs> All right, you're officially now. You're officially crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so. I posted okay. that on Instagram as tiniest bokashi ever. ever. <laughs> well, actually, it's not. But wait, we go back. Okay, 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 good. okay. Okay, but then that there's a bit question that begs then. I don't know. How much of the things you do in any given print and in any given image, how much of it is things that you're doing for yourself and how much of it is things that you're doing for the people who are going to own this object? That well, is, I have you, you get no my question, idea. right? You get my no question. Idea. So, will anybody see this? Will they know about it? You've heard me ask this question before when I'm looking at an old people print. People like you will know. Maybe I'm making this print for you. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a daddy complex? Ah. <laughs> very nicely done. More very, very nice. As I said, it just pushes all my buttons, you know, whatever. You know, I like to see somebody trying really hard to make it as beautifully, make it as well as possible, you know. So, congratulations. Oh, um, nice. Clean X. My Instagram is K uh, Vivid Labs KP. Okay. So, this is actually, this is available, like, people can buy this from your website, the Vivid Labs. Can yeah, I need that? to update my website. And please don't, but nobody order anything. Now, because you're not going to get it for another QB few shopping. weeks. Now, what is it? QB shopping. QB, what's what are we? This is the QB something shopping channel today. Oh right. <laughs> Put your order in before nine thirty, then you will get nothing special. You'll get it in a month. <laughs> <laughs> but I need to update my website because this particular one is not on there okay. right now. But it needs to be good. So nobody can 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 accuse yeah. us of trying to sell us. Yeah. Karen brought these to put in the shop. The prints she has brought me right now are going to be going in the shop. Yeah. So okay. you'll be or be able to order them from Dave before you can order them from me. Okay. Show me, you're, show me some. Show me if you're stateside, um, shipping will be more favorable for me. Well, this is, we've had this one before, haven't we, Karen? Yeah. This is a few years back. So, so, so. We're probably zoomed in. Yeah, to, just zoom out just a tad. Zoom, oh, just a tad. I can make these. Okay. You can leave it like that. I'll make okay. these a little smaller. It's just light snow. Light yeah. show. Light show. Yep. Transparency, eh? This is the deal. Look at this. This is what she mentioned before a minute ago when she was talking about her earlier work. The uh, uh, oil-based pigments. Mm, maybe somebody could make it happen, but whatever. But it's a, it's an integral feature of when we work with water-based pigments on wood in multiple layers. It's the transparency. Everything you put on the paper shows right through to the finished print. Laura Boswell does a good job with oil-based pigments. And okay, I should say this can't be done. I don't yeah, know. No. Say, she does no. a great okay. job, but okay. uh, yeah, she her materials are... So for me, this is all about the transparency in the layers. You can just sit there all day and look at this, and you you never, it just keeps going and going and going. John, oh, yeah, 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 you did buy this, the light show print. Um, my mom was an artist, and so I've, I've done art all my life. Um, so I guess I could say that I learned it from her. I mean, she was teaching me principles of perspective while I still had baby teeth. It was... Um, an See, education of having a mom like mine. About the transparency here, I don't know. You've made everything transparent. I mean, you've made the trees themselves. We get a tree here, and we can see the, can tree, see the tree behind, behind it. Mm -hmm. So this is not in any way a realistic thing. I mean, mm -mm. we can see the transparency of fireflies behind a tree trunk. So you're just playing with us here, you know, just mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. 
imaginary. Well, it's, it's, it's a magical yeah. forest yeah. filled yeah. with fireflies. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, very, very cool, very nice. I would never have thought of something like Dave. Dave with his control thing. Once he put that tree there, he would have cut out the branch of the tree behind it because you can't see a tree through another tree. I Dave, would have. You know, honestly, this was an accident. Shh, don't. It was an me. accident. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize mean? it would come out this way, but I'm happy that it did. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry to start the conversation. <laughs> Excuse me. So, the other thing that's very, very difficult for us, I know, it's the, I can imagine what Karen might have wanted to do is make a nice fuzzy light around each of these fireflies, you know. Mm, As it is, mm -hmm. it's a crisp, shiny light, mm -hmm. so we can just print bang, bang, bang. I had no idea how to do that. No, and it would be. I think you would have to, like, dab the pigment off or something so, 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 so. individually. And do it consistently. This over. is magical. Thank you, man. This is really, really super. So. All right. What do we have next here? This one. Yeah, we're out of this one, right? They all sold bang, bang, bang. Oh, uh -huh. like oh sorry. No, I think you still have a few of these in the shop. Okay, but this is, I don't know, there's something else about this. The last two you showed me are not something around you. They're not real. This now, as part of the that's, theme, the print you right. want to make. Yeah. This is the, the world around you. This is local, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah, so, so. yeah this is, um, a friend of mine has a place in Junction, Texas, and it's it tends to not rain as much there as it does when you go further east. And it was a dry, dry summer. And we were sitting on his back porch looking at this thunderhead build up. And we thought, oh, and, and we, we smelled the rain. Mm -hmm. And it built up higher and higher. Mm -hmm. And the... The sun started to set and it got more and more colorful and it was just the most amazing sunset. Mm -hmm. We smelled the rain and we didn't get any of it. So, so this is a real uh, event, a real place. A real yeah. Thing. yeah. That's what, for me, this idea of having people in the guest corner in a shop is really all about. People who are using our materials and colors so they get the beauty of the, the object itself. But I'm not interested in, as I said before, you know, making Japanese temples or something. I want to see people using the world around them and the experiences around them. So people making prints. <clears throat> this lives in Austin, Texas, but it growing on this Japanese tradition of materials is a wonderful, wonderful way to put it all together. Also, your numbering policy. You know, again, this is something that I, you're numbering, but you're not limiting these, right? Yeah. You're numbering as I mean, you go up. In practice, they'll in, probably end up being limited because there's just only so many times mm, I can reprint mm, the mm, same print. Mm. For me, because you're bored with it or you just yeah. have no time to go back and forth? So yeah, I want to do new yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you don't know how many it's going to end up, so you can't start from the beginning. I'm not going to stop at any point or yeah. burn the blocks. Or when I was like talking that. to Matt Brown about this, I think he decided, he set some quite arbitrary high number of 200, but he only maybe makes 10. And then if he wants to make some more, he'll make the, the 11 to 20. And if mm -hmm. he wants to make some more, he'll make 21 to 30. But he will never get to the 200. Mm -hmm. So there isn't actually going to be a number 199 over 200. It's interesting there. about his work, too, because I see that he has, like, what does he call them? Uh, phase, it's not phase one, phase two, or it's not... State. 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 Yeah. State. So he'll go back to a print and A change of colors, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'll, yeah. you know, yeah. tweak the colors, you know, make... Give it more contrast or okay, something. Okay, well, you then, when you come back to make some more of these, this is what? This is your second batch of this print uh -huh. or third batch? Have yeah. you changed the coloration at all? Or have you tried, if you compare, as a craftsman, tried to make it the same? I tried to make it the same, but if you compare the two side by side, you'll see some differences. Mm, okay. The green at the bottom is greener in this one, and mm. it's grayer in the mm, first batch. Mm, mm, okay. So each lot Crazy. would have its small variations. But you're trying as much as possible to, to keep it consistent. Do I add story pages to the print, like Dave's prints? Not really. Um, there's a little story. About the next one you're going to see, there's a little story on my website, which I will recount here. Well, the question is, that's actually an interesting and valid question, you know. Uh, over the years, I've talked with different people about this, and I remember, I don't remember who it was, a printmaker here. Oh, I do remember who it was, but it doesn't matter about the name. Uh, he had put his prints on the website, and bang, bang, bang. And I had asked him, you know, well, what is this? You know, uh, put, put a story with it. Uh, you know, tell us what, what we're looking at. And he was vociferous, very, very vociferous. Dave, if it's required, if, I, if the people need a story there to tell them what's going on, then I have failed. He felt that the image should stand completely alone and it didn't require a story or a background. And if that was necessary, he had failed to do his job properly. was his viewpoint. Mm -hmm. What's your thoughts on this I mean, you told us a story about this already, so it's not a fair question uh, yeah, at this point. I don't, I don't care.
care if people, I don't care what people get out of them. I don't, I'm not trying to say anything mm -hmm. with my prints mm -hmm. or uh, convey any mm -hmm. particular mm -hmm. message. Mm -hmm. So just like, mm -hmm. whatever, okay, whatever the viewer gets out of it. Let me hear that. People out there, you heard already, you saw the picture here now, but you also heard Karen tell us a short yeah. story about it. The fact that the friend and the, and, the, and the clay smell in the air and all that kind of stuff. For me, knowing that, that makes this more attractive and more interesting. Now, if I bought this and I heard the artist talk about this and I know the story, but the story isn't actually embedded into this sheet, so I die, the next person picks it up. They didn't hear her tell that story. Dave here wants that story to carry with the print. This is why I'm so verbose and typing all this crap and things. Interesting. From that other person's view that I said, it's a failure of mine because the print should have that by itself. And you're, I guess, based on what you said, somewhere in between. What yeah. about the people yeah. seeing it? Do you want to know that story? Does it mean anything? I really think it does. Absolutely, I think it does. And I think I can prove it. <clears throat> Nobody's typing. Nobody's typing. Nobody's oh, they're typing. All, they're all typing, but... Oh, uh, it's like typing that's going to be like... <laughs> paragraph when it comes out. Because <laughs> it's not a simple one word answer. Yeah. You know, it's, it's okay, while we're waiting for some of those responses, I said I can prove it that the story is important. And we, there's a story that we hear all the time. It's in the newspaper. Every year it comes up by clockwork. There's an auction at Sotheby's. There's a, they've discovered, uh, let's make up a name, Michelangelo painting. And it's been on somebody's closet door for the past 600 years. And we didn't know it was a Michelangelo and it was worthless. But once you rub the dust off and we can read Michelangelo and that matches the missing one, now it's worth $10 billion. You know, I'm making up the numbers, but you yeah, know yeah, my yeah. point. Most people here are saying that they, they like to hear the stories. They like the context. It adds depth to the experience. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Gekitsu says it's less instant gratification, more strictness of object. The art, itself, the art object is the print, the drawing, the sculpture, etc. Not an mm -hmm. essay tacked onto it. If it needs an essay, is it a good image? Shouldn't it have been something else instead? So he's more like... Mm. We're, talking, we're talking how much story do we yeah, need if we need an essay. Yeah. Okay, that's sort of, that becomes an analysis of this object, I guess. But I think my point holds that Michelangelo, that object was worthless until we knew the story. And then all of a sudden, we find value in it. It's not just one talking about monetary value, but now people are looking at that thing. Nobody looked at it before because nobody mm -hmm. thought it was important. Mm -hmm. But now, oh, it must be important because it's by a famous guy. That's mm -hmm. another story of the type that you've just told me. Yeah, KG says the work of art should be able to stand by itself, but a story adds depth. Okay, I'll buy that. I'll I buy think that. I think that's kind of my feeling. You can look at it. So yeah. I think maybe I'm being a bit insulting. You can look at it mindlessly, just enjoying the colors and stuff, or you can know what Karen was feeling that day she did that. You know, yeah. So, so it's okay. We're in the same thing. Right. It's not a yes or no question, obviously. It's a... Yeah. So here's one. Oh, here's the new one. This is the one that I hadn't seen until you brought it yeah. yesterday. Yes. Uh -huh. this is, is this the newest one? or, or... Um, Oh my God, number three. One of the lowest numbers. Yes, oh my yes, God. it is one of the newest ones. What happened ones? to number one? You keep those? I sold a couple. <laughs> no. <laughs> what do you mean a couple with number one? Wait, 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 wait. I think I sold number one and number two. Oh, number two. Okay. When you said you sold a couple, it wasn't you sold a couple of number ones. Oh, no. <laughs> I said what happened to number one, and you said you sold a couple. Okay. Are we okay for vision here? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's <clears> good. Okay, there's a backstory here, too. Karen talked about her mother, and this is a, a copy. Well, she didn't tell us. It's, of not an image. A, it's not really a reproduction, yeah, yeah, but, but it, it's inspired by yeah. a watercolor sketch that my mom did. She took a workshop with Warren Taylor, who is a, a watercolorist, pr pretty well known watercolorist in Texas. Is? Was. Is. 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 He's still living. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, and uh, they, they did an exercise in the workshop where they did some uh, watercolor sketching on site. And they did a real color sketch of a, of a scene and then a false color sketch of the scene. And so this is taken from her false color sketch. Um, and the, it's her composition um, and her, you know, basically the same colors that she used. But it must be, it's a real place, right? She went out to yeah, a it's a real place, the, the Mora River in New Mexico. This is fun. It's fun. I'm not sure what kind of pigments are you using? This orange. What physical kind of pigment is this? Hmm. The what blues are, are phthalos mostly. Um, the the pink is Holbein. Uh, what is it called? 
But these, these are what? These are powder pigments you're using? Or water no, water colors and tubes? tubes. Water yeah. Tubes. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, so there's no opacity in each of these. Yeah. Those two water colors, there's, there's always like China white or something mixed into them. This doesn't, gives them an opacity here. You can see. There's not much opacity, I think, in, in, these, in these colors. Interesting. Very, very nice. Again, it's the similar to the one with the fireflies. There's a, an imaginary aspect to this. That's it's not real, but it's very, very interesting. Tom asked for a zoom. Oh, oh, well, again, I we'll have see to. This, so you. If I move this out of the way, zoom. I don't know if I can just hold this. Yeah, that might be the best. Okay. Or, or. It might nestle. It's like, I got it now. You got it. I got it. I got it. Okay. I think I'm going to drop this on her. It will nestle here for a minute. Boom, it'll sit there. All right, I, cool. Now, now we got. We can really zoom. Move it toward the top of the paper. Excuse me, toward the top of the block. Actually, that's good. Move that's pretty good. Towards the top that's of good, the and you can zoom more. Yeah. Stop. <laughs> I'm not going to smash the flask. That would be a day to remember. <laughs> that would be. Oh my God. <laughs> so are we okay? We're online? Are we? Are we? Yep. yep. We're good. Yeah, I, I don't use any gouache. Um, that doesn't mean I might not at some point. What's the paper? This is very, very thick. Yeah, paper. that's this Kitado. Heavy stuff. I got a I got a batch of 20 sheets of the Kitado Kazuki. Did you size it yourself? No, it was already sized. It came sized? Okay. Yeah. Keys and I, I sorted it into thin and thick <laughs> because some of them were thick right, and okay, some okay, of them okay, were thin, yeah, yeah, and yeah, that's yeah, from the yeah, thick stack. Yeah, yeah. So it's 100% mulberry. It looks yep. pretty clear. Yeah. Nice. Yep. But that's hard to print. This thick and hard paper to show. You must have softened it up with water. Oh, yeah. Like. It was, it was it's moist. It's thick and hard. Um, yeah, it's not it was. Easy. So this purple up at the top, then, my guess would be that's more than one impression. Though. Oh, yes. Yeah. That purple up there has the pink. The next purple, the blue, the dark purple. Okay. It's got like at yeah, least yeah. four, maybe maybe five impressions. With on paper it. this thick and hard, I get in areas where there are only a couple of impressions here. We can see the speckleness, the bottomness. Yeah. yeah, it was hard. To, very very difficult. Hard to, to avoid that. Color. Yes. Very difficult paper. Oh, thank you, Em's artwork. Appreciate that. There's one more, which uh, you guys have mm -hmm. seen before. Oh, the uh, cloud, desert cloud. Desert cloud, oh. yes. Yes, yes, we've had this before, so. Uh -huh. so. And you can zoom some more on that one. Now that we have room. It's also Kitaro. Yeah, and this is a real cloud, a real cloud that I saw in the desert. You mean the towering, I don't know, what is it? Thunder, um, thunder Cumulo Cumulo Nimbus. Cumulo. Very soft. In fact, it reminds me actually yesterday, Cameron, yesterday, was it yesterday, two days ago, Cameron Bailey was here. So I'm seeing a bunch of his prints for the first time. And some of his prints were this kind of stuff. They involved landscape. And there were no outlines on the landscape objects. Mm -hmm. So there was a mountain and some sky behind it, some clouds behind it, some trees in front of it. And none of them had outlines, unlike the print you showed me a minute ago, which had clear outlines among mm -hmm. everything. And we were chatting about this, and, uh, and I had felt that some of the things, because there were no outlines, it was a bit hard to tell what was what. What is a mountain, and what is a cloud, and what is this, you know. And even here on this one, I'm not actually sure what I'm looking at. You yeah, people at, think that maybe those. That's a that's, that's a mountain. That's definitely a mountain. The one behind it is this a mountain? It's or actually is this a, a cloud. In okay. the in the real view yeah. of it, it was a cloud. Okay. It looks kind of like mountains mm -hmm. in the distance. Mm -hmm. but Does it matter? I don't know. But I don't. Know, so, so. I don't know. Anyway, I, I I have this idea that I'm going to do a cloud series, and so I have actually called this one. Cloud Series 1 and the Desert Cloud with the big sunset thing that we looked at earlier, um, Cloud Series 2. I hope, there, I hope there are more. I like clouds and I like rocks. 
So we could a line. I don't know how much how visible it is here. We could the line is from superimposition yes, of the two, edge of the block. two blocks. Yes, so, yeah. So. Are you okay with that? Here. I am. Okay. Oh, the line on the horizon. I was trying to avoid that. Well, it's not the horizon line because it's not it's not a single line. It's, yeah. the, it's the block that printed that mountain. Yeah. And this block, a uh -huh. separate block that printed this mountain, and we can see the edge, the sharp yeah. edge. You bevel it I off. I kind of wish that that edge wasn't there. Well, you bevel it off. When, you know. Cool. You were <clears throat> eating your hussy pills. Was I? <laughs> <laughs> Taking your hussy pills. Hey, Karen, thank you very much for showing it to us. Oh, I, so I interrupt there because, you know, whatever. You were busy talking about your work and talking about yourself, but people that don't know your work, it's a bit silly. So thanks for showing us. Oh, you're thank welcome. Thank you very much. A couple of years ago when I met Karen and saw some of these prints and asked her to put them in the shop here, it's not everybody that I, that I ask, you know. There's, there's people that come and show us prints and I didn't really think about asking them to put them in our shop. With Karen, it's because the thing I said before, the overlap with the Japanese tradition is massive, of course. They're attractive. But another thing is the lady here is being really reasonable with the prices. There's no sort of expectation that she's going to get many, many zero, 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 zeros for this stuff yet. She may be planning it for the future, I don't know. But the point being, I'm happy you're keeping these accessible for people, you know, and... Uh, yeah, I'm just I'm happy for that, people that to enjoy nice. my prints. I need to get back to carving, but I have no idea where the camera is now. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to ask you again. Oh, uh, you can zoom if you're doing that here. Yeah. And if you go straight in. Do we want to put your light back in? I did. Oh, you've already got it. Okay. You can zoom more, and you're you're centered here pretty well right now. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Do that too. Something uh, I meant to pick up on the conversation today that uh, John Becker out there might be interested in hearing. Is it okay to talk about this? Karen said she's going to rent a car in a couple yeah. of days and drive <laughs> around. Yep. John, what do you think about this? <laughs> <laughs> John's told me. <clears throat> Has he? Have you talked to him about this? I, I, I oh, mentioned sorry. it to oh, him okay. in email. Sorry, and sorry, and sorry. He, he said, um, just keep telling yourself, keep left. But if it's not just the road, it's the car itself that's backwards, you know, of course. You know. Right? The steering wheel is on the, the other yeah, side. Yeah, so, yeah. I've done so. a left side of the road driving in St. John, Virgin Islands. But there they have, uh, they've got American cars there, so they do left side wait, driving. Wait, so, so, oh, it's an old British colony. It's an old it? British oh, colony, okay, yeah. Okay, they do okay. left side driving, but the steering wheel's on the left. So you're like, <laughs> trying to... Hmm, interesting. To I never tried that one, so... Yeah. Thank you, GZ. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Scotch and Lobster. Oh, the prints, yes. Yeah, appreciate it. <laughs> XLD50X comments. Just print a completely light gray and call it Dutch Clouds. <laughs> oh, for your series. <laughs> <laughs> that would be an easy one. Thank you. <laughs> well, it's the old joke about the polar bear and the blizzard, right? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Perfectly piece of white, perfectly white piece of paper. Tom, get a century? Isn't that thing gigantic? I think I rented uh, I rented the tiniest car I could get. Well, you mean like a K car? A K car, yeah. Okay. yeah. So you're not going on freeways or stuff up there? Oh, no, no. I'm just going to be in little back roads. Little back roads. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rent it in Gifu, uh, near the Gifu train station, which is pretty urban, mm. but... Uh, and then get out of town. And then get the hell out of town. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The things with driving along, you've got your little, your little back road then. It's not going to be a two-lane road with a yellow stripe in the middle. It's just going to be a road. 
you know, with stuff on each side. And they're, they're back. They're oh, no. Well, like on and so somebody else comes the other way. You know, of course, you just move over to the side and around your goal. Uh -huh. But being a, you know, that could be the place where I think your, your wrong way is going to be the most dangerous. You think there's no stripe? No center stripe? I, I don't know what kind of level of back road. It's on, you said like, head Highway 19, whatever that well, is. Well, it's, if it's a, a highway number, then yes, it's there's one number. lane each way yeah. and, and a yellow line in the middle and stuff. But if you're on something that doesn't have the line, once you've got off the highway, to me, that's where the left-right confusion comes. You're going down the road, or you're on the correct side, somebody else comes on the correct side. But the internal, you got to move over and let them go by, that's uh -huh. when the wrong side, I think, is, uh -huh. is most likely mm. to, to, to kick in. But what do I know? You know just please be careful. <laughs> How do the Japanese drive? Are they aggressive? I've only taken one or two car trips in Japan with other people driving, and I haven't noticed any aggressive driving. But uh, some friends of mine were... Uh, English teachers in the Inaka, and uh, one of them told me, <clears throat> don't obey the speed limit, because if you do, people will pile up behind you and start honking and get mad. So... Are we talking freeway driving, or...? or? I think little roads in the Inaka. <laughs> in in uh, uh, Fukushima, uh, uh. Uh, specifically. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fukushima Prefecture. Really? Yeah. <laughs> we'll see whether... Their experience carries over to being a rental car. Does it have a special license plate? Like, do people know it's a rental car or, or a foreign driver or something? I guess nothing. You know? I, I'll find yeah. that out when I pick it up. Did John chime in on that one? I'm curious to see what John would say about that. Uh, let's see. I don't think. I don't think John has mentioned anything. Got to get one of those learner badges. <laughs> I'll be learning. I guess one of the main things that is different here is that there's no turning on a red light. So where mm -hmm. I live, mm -hmm. if you're going to turn right and you're in the right lane, it's okay to, to turn unless there's a sign that says you shouldn't. Um, but here that's mm, not yeah, yeah, allowed. Yeah. I think it's also in Britain, I think it's not allowed, I believe, I think. I got caught. <coughs> when I was in my early 20s, I went to a, on a business trip from a music store to Europe, to, to Germany, to the Frankfurt Music Fair. I went over to England for a few days, rented a car in London, drove up to see my grandmother. This is, this is like 1974, 1975. And it was the same, it was on the wrong side of the road, so I was really trying to be careful, careful, careful. I came to one red light, whatever, made the turn on the light, and half down the block there, there's a cop standing there. He says, it's green for me, it must be red for you, what are you doing? You know, and I'm like, I just turned on a red light. And he's, you're not allowed to do that. So. Yeah, they're saying that in Europe it's not allowed, and mm. in mm. New York mm. City it's not allowed. Oh, really? In parts yeah. of America too? Really? I think there, it, it depends it's on the local jurisdiction. It's because the number of pedestrians, or how many pedestrians, there's so many pedestrians, like in New York, it doesn't mm. make any sense to allow it, because mm -hmm. you're going to be fighting with pedestrians, of mm -hmm. course. You know, so. yeah. Definitely no turning on a red light in England. Mm. Oh, welcome, Longstrand. Glad that you can make it. Hello. In the UK, we have turning arrows on the lights. <clears throat> also, it's permitted where it's permitted, but in where general, the light no, comes okay. on. Yeah. Yes. Are you renting an electric? Or you don't know what? I, I don't think so. I have no idea. Like what range it will have and like I pro there's probably mm. a rule that you have to you know fill bring it back full of gasoline um, mm. or they will have a pump at the place you bring it yeah, back yeah and, and they'll charge you double of course yeah mm, not so bad it's just Japan nobody would have done yeah. oh, but you'd pay the normal price absolutely nobody could get away with doing something like that really yep. I've never done rented a car here, but I'm just the culture. Well, it was part of the, the like, culture, you know, a so. lot of places in the U.S., if you, when you rent a car, it's part of the contract. Mm. It's like, bring it back full, or mm. we'll charge you this for fuel. Oh, so? Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> How 
How'd that go, Fly? His, uh, when they were driving in New Zealand, his wife had the job to remind him at each intersection, do not turn into oncoming traffic. <laughs> I see. That's fine. <laughs> no, anything help. It's just so dangerous. You know, one, one split second mistake and you're, yeah. you're all dead. So I got, I got no problem with that at all. You know, Not at all. It's a hugely difficult thing to do. You got, you got decades of, of, of muscle memory. You know. Saved our bacon fly reports. Yeah, yeah. I got no argument with that. I remember reading about a country, was it Sweden or somewhere, where they had been driving on the left or what it was, and they decided at one point to change over. So they prepared all the roads and corners and, and on-ramps and stuff, and then at midnight, one night or something, that's the change, and from the next month, they, I'm not making How this up. How can you do that? I am not making this because up. Because everybody's vehicles are not set up. I am not, not making up. this up. Oh my God. They, they will tell us. It, was it Sweden, and this is 1970s or 80s or something? Somebody can yeah, back me up Sweden. Yeah, Sweden. Yep, yep. And they did it. And it they did it bang. with no incidents. Wow. Huh. Did they so have for their a number cars? of years? Well, for a number of years, they must have phased out the old, you know, you got mm -hmm. your handle on the wrong, you got your steering wheel on the wrong side. So they must have planned this a decade in advance. 1967. Or 60s, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. How were their cars before then? Were they set up to be left side driving or did they, did they have a mix of cars or? I guess they needed to come in line with the rest of Scandinavia. It made no sense uh -huh. for Sweden to be yeah. lined up with Britain when maybe Norway and the neighboring countries were on the other side. So that must have been the motivation. But yeah, and then the, the on-ramps and off-ramps are all the wrong shape and the wrong size. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Oh, they had to swap their headlights so that the Headlights. headlights would not be, you know, headlights are aligned to um, slightly point away from the center of the road. Really? Are they? They are, yeah. Back in the 1960s even? Really? Probably, yeah, to avoid blinding oncoming drivers. Okay. okay. And so they had to, they had to adjust the headlights really? in order to really? not that's, avoid that's a part blinding of people. Right, okay. Welcome to Japanese woodblock printmaking. <laughs> Apparently, when they switched, there was a reduction in accidents because most drivers already had left-hand drive vehicles. Oh, so they had prepared they had, in advance for this. Yeah, and oh, maybe I just see. because, no, no. like, That's right, because Sweden was common. not a big car maker. They were importing cars, and they yeah. were wrong. Yeah, and they were probably oh, okay, a mix. Okay, 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 okay. I get it. I get it. <laughs> yeah. So Dave is uh, carving on a... The small little image is going to be part of our share yeah. certificate, which is now officially late because we were supposed to be shipping these about August, April 1st. And uh, April 1st is Monday. Ain't, ain't no way I'll be shipping these on Monday. But we're close. We're close. It won't be months and months and months late. So. Kleenex points out that Sweden actually had two major car brands at the time, Volvo and Saab. Oh, I see. Okay. Oh, yes. Yeah. So we... I should know that. We have those in the States. At the time, so are they hmm. both, Volvo must still be in existence. Is the SOC still exist or is it uh, so history? Hours of time. We won't have the nine o'clock reminder from Ayamasan, of course, because uh, well, it's ten minutes till nine. Saturday, so she won't be coming in. Eleven minutes and or ten minutes and forty. I spoke to Ayamasan last night before. I just said she was leaving, and I said, you know, how's your weekend? You're looking forward to having a good weekend, you know. <laughs> night on the town. <laughs> <coughs> nope, she said, I know Taransan. You know, her husband Taransan. Mm -hmm. He's working for us as a carver, and she said he'll be working all weekend. I'm like, wait a minute, we have rules here at Mokohankan for this stuff. You know, you don't do this. And she pointed out to me, I knew this already, actually. He had talked to me a couple of weeks ago about this. He's an employee of us with our projects, working theoretically 40 hours a week on our projects. But he is still an apprentice of Asuka-sensei. 
Ah, so, so he's he's working duty. he's working two masters at the moment. Oh and, you know, dear! <laughs> and so I guess this weekend he's got a, something that he's got to get in there, and uh, uh -huh. I'm laughing as I tell you this story. You know, pay your dues. So, you know, I feel a bit. I have mixed feelings about it. Taransan is a really nice young man, doing very well, and I, I at this point now I don't feel that he has dues to pay. Just simply let's work together, walk up this ladder together. You know, work on what you're doing. But this is Japan, and he has responsibilities to that to that mm -hmm. man who has helped him a great deal over mm -hmm. the past few years. You know, and in that sense, there's dues to be paid, and uh, so that's that's their weekend. I think Ayano-san Ayano -san is going to be like whatever, watering the flowers while Taran-san is hard at work, slaving over a hot wood block. You know, so I think it's okay to tell this story. It's all right. There's nothing bad for them about it. So how, how long is his apprenticeship? Going well, to go? I, I don't think you'd have to ask. I know, Sanchi, you can tell me more about this. I don't think it's a formal. There is a seven years to the day, and we drip the last drop of blood. I don't think it's that formalized. But I don't know. In terms of until you're good enough, the young man already is producing work that's good enough for, for sale. Yeah. So in that sense, it's okay. For him, the main reason to be hanging around. Asuka Sensei is the experience he's going to gain there. You know, because mm -hmm. you know, as you know, we don't. I've got my own experience pool, but it's really valuable for Tanan to be involved with a, a man who has worked in this tradition for so many years. Mm -hmm. so, so part of it's a responsibility. He has a responsibility to help Asuka Sensei, and part of it is there's stuff probably there, it's like just a motivation to, to help known. him yeah, because yeah. out of um, <coughs> because of the value well, both, that both he finds are true, in, yes. in both the interaction. And then there's this yeah. sort of quasi-legal obligation because he is the apprentice, he's got to do that. And then it's valuable, he's going to learn stuff there. You know, so. yeah. And also, putting him under the gun to get going fast, 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 that's, to me, that's not a bug, that's a feature. You know, get productive. You know, so. LL says, once you defeat the master with your small carving knife, you become the master. <laughs> Hey Kate, good to see you too. Kate from Perth? Kate from Perth. Yes. Yep. We've had a number of people here over the past little while from Western Australia. You know, there'll be fans who are chatting and part of the conversation always, I don't really want to talk about myself all that much. So as soon as possible, I switch it around and ask them, hey, where are you from? You know, what's going on? And I've heard Western Australia a, a number of times in the past few weeks, more than I would have expected. You know. Tom told me to check for hidden chocolate eggs under my stool, and I. Oh, I there's didn't. Not any no, under I there. didn't do that, Karen. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just got down here this morning and got set up. Strange. No one from New South Wales. Someone asks. Well, lots and lots and lots of Australians, mm -hmm. of course, and it's usually, you know, of course, Sydney, Melbourne, or sometimes Brisbane. Mm -hmm. The person that asks is from Brisbane. Mm -hmm. Kate, apparently, though, is born and bred in New South Wales. You know, I think we've talked about this in stream before, the, the way that people do ask, answer that question when I ask them, where are you from, it's become a, I now wait to see if their answer follows the pattern, and hontoni 99% of the time it follows the pattern. I ask them, where are you from, and the answers will be France, England, Canada, Germany, Australia, Texas, or Austin, or or. Los Angeles. Americans always answer not with the word U.S. or America. They always, always answer with their state or city. I'm still not sure why this happens. I get the United States of America is supposed to be, you know, like you, you're a state and they're all gathered together. Do they not think of themselves as Americans first, but as Texans first? You know, it's, it's, a, it's an open question, yeah. of course, but it really is a thing. Europeans and other country people always answer with their country name, but for the most part, Americans don't. Yeah, it's, it's although, you know, part. they are, the Europe, European countries are, if they're members of the EU, are sort of 
Nobody has ever answered. I'm from the EU or, yeah, or I'm from, from Frankfurt. The they don't do that. They do not do that. Their I identity as much as if somebody will say, I'm from Germany. I don't, they don't say, I'm German. They'll say, I'm from, I ask, where are you from? And they say, I'm from Germany. Mm -hmm. But Americans don't. Like, no big deal. It's nothing, nothing, nothing earth shaking. Someone says it's just because the U.S. is big, and it, if you just if you just say I'm yep, American, it doesn't really narrow it. Down I get it. I get enough. it. I get it. I get it. And then yeah, the answer is you know, why don't Australians or Canadians do the same thing then? Because they're maybe even bigger, but it makes no sense. Hello, Hello, Karen. 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 Hello, that was Ishikawa-san, printer working upstairs. We were talking before, did we take the paper out? It's her paper that I took out this morning. So. Oh, Kobe Beef next door wants to know if I'm going to eat at his restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> Dave highly recommends. I have yet to pass through that portal. Oh. Also, the, the couch is gone. They've got rid of the couch. I hadn't even noticed actually a couple weeks ago. Maybe actually they had no choice. It is so crowded out there now uh -huh. on some of the days that that couch was just, just simply in the, in, way. in the way. Absolutely in the way. So, or maybe somebody asked them to take it away. I don't know. No, we ate uh, at the Sumida River Cafe. Oh, the other night, yeah, thank you. And that, that was very good. It was a. Uh, First night you got here. Yeah, yeah. And then yesterday I ate at. Um, uh, Tsune Zushi, which is a little sushi joint a few blocks away that I... Near your hotel? I don't know. No, I'm sort of like... Tsune Zushi. <laughs> Tsune Zushi. Okay, okay. I is think it, that uh, means just like normal sushi. Oh, just, <laughs> a, guy, a guy behind the counter or a rotary or what? Oh, uh, it's a, two guys behind the counter. Okay, yeah. um, but I've gone there every time I've visited. So really pretty much every time. Do they recognize you? No. I recognize the, the sushi chef, though. Yep, none of that California roll sushi. I got a chirashi bowl, which is like sushi mm. rice with mm. a whole bunch of different mm. fish and shellfish and stuff on top. It was really good. I had uh, breakfast yesterday at uh, Denny's above the uh, 7-Eleven, and I can report it was, <laughs> it was an excellent breakfast. I got um, uh, a Caesar salad, small one, and um, uh, miso shiro, miso soup, and um, some rice, and some natto. And so coffee. was it a breakfast set then? It was a set. You didn't have to order separately. It was, it was a, a set. Breakfast set. Okay. It was a set. 865 yen for the whole shebang. So, uh, so there must be, they've obviously got Western breakfast sets there. They do, you know, you can get pancakes and, and eggs and, like and waffles yeah, yeah, yeah. and things yeah. like that. But you went for the Japanese one? Yeah. yeah. Natto, yeah. you're okay with natto this? Yeah, like okay. it. I know the, the breakfast question here, it's thing. Tourists, especially coming from America rather than Europe, they're, they Time zone is like they're six, seven, eight hours ahead. So they've stayed up late, they've gone to bed, and then they're up four o'clock in the morning. You know? mm -hmm. Of course, it's it's now noon for them in, in America. So they're very frequently awake in the morning. And we see them. When I go to the pool in the morning, seven o'clock or so, 
I see groups, clusters of sort of semi-zombie, you know, no, <laughs> you know, or, or a family with two kids and the kids are, we're, we're going to get breakfast, you know, because there's no breakfast stuff around mm-hmm. here. Japanese don't do this. Salaryman eats breakfast at home. There's no like transport cafes like there is in Britain or whatever. And it's tough in the middle of Tokyo here to get breakfast out. And Karen asked me where to get breakfast. And I think I had said, you know, the Denny's above the 7-Eleven. And maybe she's like, I've just arrived in Japan for my wonderful Japanese experience. And like, it you're, you're recommending breakfast. I go to Denny's. It was you know? a great breakfast. Good recommendation. Whatever. The thing is, it's, it's got the same word. These are the same company that owns Denny's there and owns Denny's here. But the same thing. Like a 7-Eleven in America is not the same thing as a mm-hmm. 7-Eleven here. So it's the same thing. A very pleasant place to sit. I yeah. thought that they were open 24. And I was wrong. Yeah, they used to be. Okay. I asked about that. Okay. They said, yeah, because you are... Uh, Niju Yon, now Yon it's seven eleven or something, I guess. Something it? like that. Over I don't seven, know when okay. they closed. Okay. But so my apologies yeah, for that. So, so you were there at four o'clock, and I, no, no, know. I looked it up. Okay, I looked it up so that I could. Didn't trust me. She looked it up. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> trust but I was wrong. Yes, I was wrong. No, no problem. But it is a problem for for morning stuff. You know, so. I see that every morning on the way to the pool. I see this. You know. The, there's a McDonald's. If you go from Don Quixote, turn left down two blocks. There's a McDonald's, and they are open 24 hours. But I, I can't send anybody there because it's not different enough to be really interesting. You've got to try McDonald's in Japan. It is different, but it's not that, that much different. different that it would be. I oh still haven't God, tried it. To try this so. Thing, so. But something that did it is is really nice. It's a casual Japanese family restaurant, clean, clear, happy, warm. You know. <laughs> Maybe what the thing oh, to try Oh, did anybody get? Hmm? Did, I wasn't paying attention to see if anybody got the time. Oh, I see. It's Saturday too, at nine o'clock on a Saturday. Oh yeah, of course Tom nailed it. Yes. We well, say of course, but there's been. Uh... Uh, there have been uh, <laughs> people who jumped the gun <laughs> this time. He got it. Yeah. Good job. Memes, memes. Wendy's in Japan is different. No, I haven't seen a Wendy's. Well, they're all going to be different, of course. You know, there's no—I don't know of a Wendy's in this district. There's a Burger King in this district. We walked past it when we went to Sumida River Cafe. We passed mm-hmm. a Burger King mm-hmm. on the way. So, and KFC, those guys. Starbucks in Japan is not that different, but I think the little food items that they have are definitely different. Like the. They have a lot of, I was just there this morning and got some coffee and some quiche. And uh, there was, um, oh, just all these really beautiful cakes. Much prettier than any Starbucks cake that you would find in the States. The same concept, right? You put your order in, pay for it, go down the end of the line, that number comes up. Uh Savage, Savage Meatballs One says, "Looking good, Dave." Wait, wait, wait. That's wait, the what? that's their username, Savage Meatballs One. I don't remember seeing this. Is this first a new time user? Chat. Okay, okay, first, first time. time. Chat. All right. This yeah. is a new one for me. Run that by me again. Looking good, Dave. No, no, the name, the name. Savage <laughs> Meatballs One. <laughs> okay, like there's a two. You had to put a number on this. <laughs> two was taken. Yeah. Oh, two. <laughs> well, thank you, sir. Sir, my I was mentioning to Karen before the stream started today that there is a, a little bit difference in the pattern of the visitors here or what we hear from the visitors. Before pandemic, people came in, how are you doing? Post pandemic, many, many, many people, and we don't have a clicker to count, we're too busy, but it's like 70 or 80% of the people that come in have seen us on social media. And it's, I've been watching your YouTube videos for a long time. I've seen Remembering a Carver or this or that. That's been the pattern for the, since the pandemic closed. But recently now, and again, I can't quantify this exactly the last half a year or more, more and more we're hearing people say now, I've been watching the Twitch stream. That's fairly new. We've been on Twitch now for seven years, Mm -hmm. nearly seven years. But it's only in the past half year that I'm hearing a lot from visitors 
watching the streams. I drop in, I enjoy them now and then. And almost always I say the same thing. Yeah, do I know you? What's your handling? Have you been commenting? And they'll, they'll wave their hand. No, 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 it's okay. It's good. I've just been quietly watching. So. Well, I'm looking for the number of viewers. Where do I find that? We don't see it. They see oh, it. We don't see how it. How many viewers You'll do you have? You'll have to ask now? them. So. We Usually just, it's been like, you know, 500, 600, no, we, we can't see it. We get analytics after the fact. After it's over, I can right see 588. So. Yeah. We can't see it, and I'm fine with that. I don't want to sit there watching how many people oh are God. watching to me. You know, Somebody so, so, so. left. Yeah, yeah, oh. Yeah, yeah. And maybe it's a setting. Maybe I could turn it on. I don't want to be involved with that. You know, so. Oh, it wasn't that two was taken. The one needed to be added because Savage Meatballs already existed. That's what I said. So, well, you needed a number, so yeah, that was already yeah, there. Yeah. Yeah, so. <laughs> Question from LL. If people give you their username and you don't remember it, do you, do you never le nevertheless say, oh, of course? Do you ever, like, white lie about recognizing someone's username if you don't actually? How could I do that? My God, what, what do you mean? I'm... Yeah, I don't think you would do that. You wouldn't, you wouldn't claim to recognize somebody's username that you don't recognize. No, of course not. Well, what, what? I'm not embarrassed because I don't know that. I mean, with me, it's not usernames, it's people. Like, there would be a person who's been here five years ago, then they come back in now, um, they know who I am, and I'm sort of, we had a good conversation, you know, five years ago. Mm -hmm. I should maybe remember them, but it's usually, I don't. Mm -hmm. That's my embarrassment, that somebody has been here and I didn't remember them. So I don't, I can't fake anything, it's not impossible. You know? So I asked them, have you been here before? And they said, no, and at that point I can relax completely, because I'm not, I don't, there's no there's responsibility. No there's no, yeah, no, really, really, you're mm -hmm. joking, but it's not a no, joke yeah, for us. No, so. totally. And there's one specific young man, I can, I can um, a Patreon supporter, who's been a Patreon supporter from day one, strong Patreon supporter, bought everything we've got, and he's been now here four, five, six times, and I still persistently fail to remember him. And the excuse, he changed his hairstyle or something, whatever, what was a mask last time and stuff like this. But, and so he was disappointed, I think, this time. And he came, and he'd only been here a few months before, and I still didn't quickly enough put two and two together. So. So I fail in that more than I would like to. You know. And everybody's kind about it. They say, no, it's okay, Dave, you see a lot of people. And that's true. Yeah. But there's yeah. a difference between a reason and an excuse. The reason I didn't remember him could be because there's so many people here, or he's just not important enough to me. That's the back story, you know. So, mm -hmm. oh, no. There's another one, a, a very, very rabid fan from, from uh, Canada. Albert, I can mention, because it's okay. We went through the same thing. He came once, twice, three times, and I didn't remember, didn't remember, didn't remember. And uh, at some point, finally, the switch clicked, and I do remember him. Now I remember him with totally no problem. Like, if he's walking down the street, I would know who it is uh -huh, instantly. So uh -huh. we've, we've passed that barrier, yeah. but it's a joke. He'll come in, and like, do you remember yeah, me, Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> he knows I do now, because it's, it's become a, a joke, a meme between the two of us, you know. But this other gentleman I mentioned, it hasn't got that far yet, so, you know. Hey, Return to Earth. Welcome to the stream. When you popped up the other day, I remembered who you were. When oh, you thank goodness. <laughs> What I don't want to do is resort to the thing that we used to do back when I worked in a music shop. We had the route men, salesmen, like one salesman handled northern BC, another salesman handled Saskatchewan, stuff like mm -hmm. this. And they had this the binder with all the, the high school names and the high school band teacher and the, the orchestra director and stuff like this. Mm -hmm. So the salesman would be taking our, our, our music truck and I was, I was doing this job too. Before you, you get outside the school, you go in the parking lot, you open the little binder. Are there read, pictures? At John, and there was a picture there and the name of his kids and stuff like this. And we did this. I'm sorry. We had to. We had to. Yeah, we yeah, had yeah. to. We had to. Because yeah. otherwise it was awful. You know, you just go in and, and, you know, where's the band room? Instructions to where the band room is and stuff like this. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure some of our salesmen played it in an awful way. They'd go and say, hey, John, how's Mary? How are they? How is, you know, 
in an obvious, awful, you know. Right. Yeah. You know, so I, hopefully the salesman just kept the information in the background, you know. But I'm sure there were men who used it badly and some who used it. But it was important to us to do this. You know, I don't do that here. My God, I've got no file with... Before she came, I looked up KKP camp. Oh, there's the picture. I'll remember her, you know, in Austin. <laughs> we don't do that. I, I, you know, I've got much the same problem. I actually keep a little file in the notes on my phone. Of your, your of, clients, you mean? Of the names of my coworkers' spouses. And I hope none of them are watching. And the kids of my friends. Stuff that you sort of should know, but I, I should honestly, know. I just, should know, but I, I'm not that. I mean, yeah. I remember faces. Mm. Um, I remember numbers, mm. um, but sometimes I have trouble remembering mm. names of people mm. that I haven't seen mm. in a long time. Mm. 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 So you think then not to remember that child's name is really a bit embarrassing, and you that you should yes. remember? Yes, yes, I feel embarrassed okay. by, okay. by that. So, it's, so from their point of view, you're a bit careless. You don't care about them or something. The, the fear is that. I mean, yeah. If you didn't yeah. remember the name, would they no, feel bad to you? I, I want I to remember the name. Oh, oh, I want oh. to. Okay, so you're just trying to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And you're using an, an aid to help you do the right mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, in theory, that's what we do with the music store. We just wanted to do the right thing. But too many people, it just wasn't possible. And the fact that it became institutionalized makes it an awful thing. Yeah. Tom was asking, if, am I going to join another stream? No, I'll be back in uh, Asakusa towards the end of my stay. But it will be stream off days, so. So this is it. We will won't see you again until next time you're back. Okay. No, you'll see me. Yeah, but, but I mean. But the, the streamers, the, the yeah, the stream won't see me until next time. <laughs> hey, Kate. <laughs> yeah. Morning. Hey, morning, morning. Hi, Amazon. Hi, Amazon. Hi, Amazon. Hi, Amazon. Hi, Amazon. Hi, Amazon. Hi, Karen from last Hi. time. So. I don't think we've met before, so it's good I'm to meet you. I'm not sure. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> this is KP. Karen's prints have been in the shop. You know yes, that. Yes, I yeah. know. So I know wonderful shop. prints. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. So we have four minutes and, oh, uh, three minutes and... 15 seconds. Well, before you mean show official and show and tell. Okay. Yeah. Do we have a show and tell today? I, uh, yes, yes. I have, I have, it's on it. What we're going to do is a couple of the things that I showed in the show and tell the other day, we have learned more information. I know I showed those small sense after prints, the mm -hmm. one with the lady with the hell patterns on her kimono and stuff. Yeah. And I had struggled during the stream to remember the episode. There were three emails from people who watched this last week. Oh, yeah, one letting from me know Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. from from Corinne. Uh, four emails with mean, people explaining the story to me. Uh, Corinne sent a link to the uh, print, similar print online. Okay. Yes, yes, okay. that yeah. too, that okay. too, yes. Yeah. And then Sadako also too. She gave me some extra background information on that. So, mm -hmm. so what I have is we're going to look at those prints again uh -huh. and now we know a little bit more about what they are. That's the thing, you know, with opening these things on stream, I, whether I should, I should, probably shouldn't do that. I should open them off stream, spend a half an hour or an hour doing some research, finding what we're looking at, and then presenting it. Mm -hmm. But the problem with me there, that then becomes like a YouTube video presenting it, and to do it properly it takes more than half an hour, and I'm not ready to do that. So we're going to stick with this, open them up, and Dave's going to look like an idiot because he doesn't remember the story, but well, I, and then you'll I'm learn not more, bothered. You know, we the, have people the, jump the, in. You know, so. The, the, the communal mind that will know. help you. Yeah. With, uh, yeah. But it sort of makes me look like a bit of an idiot. I'm supposed to know this stuff. <laughs> I don't know. Sylvia Cousett says, but the crispy layers of packaging would be missing. Too. That, that's, oh, yes. That's, we wouldn't be able to count that's layers. That's become another meme. You know, so. <laughs> there are orders, Sadako. Thank you. There's a few in there, I think, today. She's going to do the usual thing. There were orders overnight. <laughs> The music wakes up the shop staff, they hear this, and we have to get those things off the shelves before we open up. So. Hyper Jerk says, I like hearing you coo over the art when you first see it. Everybody likes enthusiasm, I guess. You know, There's nothing fake about that. Those those prints we saw the other day were so nicely made, you know. And I really have mixed feelings with these, you know. I love seeing them, but I'm endlessly frustrated that we can't make prints that look that beautiful. You know? We sort of are. We're trying to. 
it's it's uh, it's good and bad. You know, have those beautiful models and to feel that we can't do it. You know. But I do recognize if you jump ahead a hundred years or whatever, put a number, 50 years, 100 years, 150 years, some future person opening packages and looking at stuff, and some of the prints I made will be in such an environment, you know. Mm -hmm. They've been out there for a hundred years, and, and somebody who knows what they're like has found these. And, ah, that's that guy I was telling you about, that, I forget his name, the, the English guy who was living in Japan at that time, making things, you know. And he, he was really trying hard, you know. He didn't quite get there, but look at this, look at this, Aww. it's really, you know, so this, is, this is sort of, I'm not, being, I'm not being coy about this, you know, Aww. if that's the way it came out. There is, my point, the enthusiasm, you know, he tried, he didn't quite get there, because there were so many handicaps, he didn't have good paper, he didn't have good wood, remember he was doing all the streaming, he couldn't focus on this, but look what he did, you know, this is so cool, and that guy will be enthusiastic in his turn yeah. about what I'm doing, yeah. and that's all I want. Uh -huh. I don't mind if he says he didn't quite get there, because that's true. The enthusiasm is what I want. That what we did a hundred years from now will be, oh my God, look at this thing. That's what will make me sleep happy when I'm six feet under, you know. So, Indeed. So that's all I care about. It's show and tell time. Okay, let me finish this one hair here and then. Uh, so give me one minute here because it's not going to take 15 minutes to. The endless sense of wonder is one of the things I've always loved about Dave in the shop. That's from Mucho Mas. I guess, I don't, know, I don't want to talk about it too much because then it becomes a thing that I have to do, you know, I mean, this is as much as possible, it's organic, I like doing this, I'm having fun doing it, and here we are. There was one, somebody said something once, he actually was trying to insult me, it was, a, it was back, back in the Baron Forum group, we were having a get-together, it was in uh, a, a place we were all together, and I behaved just whatever, I was looking at some prints and enthusiastic. And the person in the group who really didn't actually like me very much, and he said, you know, you're just like a kid doing this. Just grow up. Why don't you grow up? You're just like a kid. And he had said it as a, in his mind, this was an absolute insult. Uh -huh. I was being childish. Yeah. And I don't think it's an insult at all. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm laughing as I tell you this, whatever, you know. I think... We, we all know this, right? We see kids being enthusiastic about something. They don't know yet how difficult it is, or they don't know yet that it's going to be work later on. Mm -hmm. They're still having a ton of fun because we're protecting them from all the bad stuff, and all they see is this fun thing to do. If I can still capture some of that feeling, I don't think that's an insult. You know? mm -hmm. I don't wear socks, and I should wash my hair a bit more often, and whatever, you know. Whatever, whatever, whatever. Okay, we saw these. I have no idea, Karen. Sun. Uh, yeah. We, we do we want to move the uh, the light out of the way? Or, or the well, these are small. These are small enough. They are I small. Think, I think they're small. Yeah, that's true. Like, they're pretty small. You, you tell me which way to go here. That's centered. Uh, okay. Here, this thing. That's Up. pretty. That's centered in right there, and you can zoom some. Um, move the prints toward you, tab. Okay. Zoom a little bit more. That looks pretty good. Okay. I said when we showed this print the other day, I, you know, I, I quote, I said, I know the story, but, 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 whatever. So I'll tip my tongue, whatever. Of course, I, I'm, I'm an idiot. I can't remember. It's a very, very, very well-known story, and it may even be true. The person involved is the the priest we know as Ikkyu, Ikkyu, and I guess he was, mm -hmm. or the, as the story goes, he was noted for, and it may have been was it uh, in con, in conjunction with New Year's celebrations, perhaps, and it might have been something that actually happened here. Sensoji and Saksa. And it's, it is what I mentioned, it's the memento mori idea. Uh, showing, he did it by taking a skull on a stick and walking around and showing it to various people. And they were, you know, to, as a reminder to us of, uh, you know, the short time we have where on we're going. Plane. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm sure, but where we're going, whatever. And I guess the specific episode is either one day specifically or something in general. The lady here is depicted in the accoutrements that would give us a, let us know, she's what they call a, a taiyu or a daiyu, a top level, the top level of a courtesan. And uh, this specific lady, uh, oh my god, I'm trying to remember it. Jigoku daiyu? 
Je gok dat je dus. Dat zijn die dingen. Ik wil wel mikken. I'll just sit quietly while you guys tell the, <laughs> tell the story, whatever. But whether she was a real person or not, or whether this is a, a, a mythological uh, something has happened, I still really don't know. And I'm not sure I'm happy with this part of the story. Whereas he, a priest, is coming to this lady who is a prostitute, and is this like lady, you know? fix your ways or get out of this lifestyle you're doing because if you don't you we know where you're going what if that was a the thing then i'm a little bit unhappy with this because those ladies were not in any way evil ladies so you're looking at me puzzled the, the, the story ikkyu and the jikokudaiyu story yeah, yeah. was this a real lady a real person or is this a, a story about a general type of people in a general situation. Yeah, not we sure. don't we don't know. The, yeah, the, okay, okay. She learned so much from the priest. Mm -hmm. So she became decided it, to come a bit closer for the mic so we can hear the microphone. Rather yeah. than yeah. So this was a, the story is then this is a person. So an Ikyu san no deshi. Mm -hmm. She became no deshi. Oh yeah, she quit this work and it doesn't quit. Oh so it still, didn't okay. quit. Then you talk about the story. Okay. Yeah, didn't quit. So, but this was a top level prostitute then. Yes. And then yes. so after this experience meeting this man and having seen the skull yeah, and whatever. She clearly said I am Jigokudani. But she's so beautiful and attractive. Mm -hmm. So so people are eager to see her. Okay, so tell me more. She became his acolyte, his apprentice? Yes, yes. As as in becoming she's going to become a priest, you mean? What, no, what I yeah. learned was just deshi. She became mm, okay, deshi. Okay, mm. okay. But still, so doing, still doing her work. Then. Yes. Okay. And there's no paradox involved. In a Western world, we would have a sort of a paradox here. A lady who is working in the night business, or whatever way you want to use it, and then also becoming yeah, the acolyte of the priest. Yeah, but Jesus Christ was tolerant mm. even to the mm. Mm. prostitute. Mm. Mm. So not mm. completely mm. different. Okay. So, I mean, but that ties in with what I was saying, was the girls who were involved in this work, I mean, these are not evil ladies in any way whatsoever. They had nothing to do with joining that world. And, you know. She had a strong conflict. She was born in a, a samurai family. But because of the reason, she had to sell to get money for her oh, that She was sold. They so sold, sold her. Okay, yes, okay, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So, okay. so he, she has that kind of mm -hmm. history. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's a very mixed, intertwined, complex story here. Okay, okay. So I should have known something about this before showing this print the other day. So, okay. We had a bunch of raiders uh, join earlier, so uh, um, I don't know if you guys know what's going on, but the, we're, we did some carving earlier, and now this is the show and tell segment, and Dave is uh, explaining about some Dave, Dave, Dave doesn't know anything about what's on <laughs> he the table here at the moment. So. <laughs> so. <laughs> no, okay. I just wanted to put that back on the table, because I, I should have known all this when I opened it the other day. I should have instantly recognized what it was and told this story, but... Whatever, I just can't be there anymore. There is another part too, because one of the other prints that we showed, there is another backstory to this. And I'm not going to be able to tell you the complete story here. The characters that are used in this Senshafta are not normal Japanese characters. Some of them are, are well, they're, they're all Chinese characters. Some of them are used in Japan. Some of them are not commonly used at all. And I couldn't read it, but some of the people on the web uh, were able to read this. And there is a story. Back in the late Meiji and Taisho era, one of the Westerners who came to Japan to help with education or working as a teacher or a, I don't even know this particular man was an engineer or something. It's a guy called Frederick Starr, S-T-A-R-R. -R. Long, 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 we're talking 100 years ago. He became really, really interested in the Japanese, uh, the, the cultural thing at that time, known as Senshafuda. His name was Frederick Starr. And he, be, he collected bajillions of them. He became involved in sponsoring groups of them. And he was just really, really known as sort of Mr. Sinshafta. And I can't at the moment quote, uh, hopefully the person who gave me this information is on there. Um, or actually, Karen, can I, can I sit there for a moment so yeah, I can yeah, yeah. look up? I made a note about this. So let me try to find my glasses. It turns out that this series of, of Senshafta that we're looking at here is a series that must have been either uh, made with his cooperation. Let me get to my notes. Oh, where is it? Mm. Just about to get a sign. Carefully prepared, Dave. Where you go? Okay, here we are. Sadako sent me this information too. 
it's the, the alternate readings for a bunch of these characters. When you put them together, here, let's pop this into mm -hmm. the chat. They've made what's called Ateji. So Ateji. they've, they've, they've so grabbed, they've picked up some characters without too much reference to the meaning. They've picked up characters that can be read Frederiku Star. And that's oh. the characters you're seeing in this. So this must have been a series of Senshafta prints that were made either with his cooperation or in honor of something he was doing or something like this. And what I hadn't, what I hadn't remembered, what I had forgotten was that over on our collection website, we have a similar set of prints made, again, the same way, in cooperation with Frederick Starr. And it's in our collection already, but it's in there. Oh. <laughs> I'm like, I, does somebody have too many woodblock prints, I think? So, you know. Did you write a description? No, that must have been a Rose Sun when Rose oh, was doing that. So that's done a couple of years ago. And I did, didn't remember to talk, you know, so, so Rose sent it in, gave it to me, we copied and pasted it in. Mm. And I don't have the link right now, but there's a set of prints, sent after prints on our website that has the same, uh, the same uh, derivation, either Star was involved or, uh, or not. So. so there's still lots more to explain, uh, I don't know, and why they would use characters that really are just sort of bizarre. Any, any normal Japanese person would look at this and just say, what is going on? Because it makes no sense whatsoever to do. So that's a bit of the backstory on these two that I should have known when I opened them up the other day. That's that story. What's our time? Man? We have uh, four minutes. Four. <laughs> what are we going to do? Oh, my God. <laughs> what we're going to do is simply we're going to say goodbye. It's okay. We've had enough. Karen, thanks very much oh, for sitting in you. here. So, thank you. Good when to see you, you guys. When are you coming back? Um, the 14th. No, 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 no. I mean... Oh, back to Japan? Yeah, when you're coming back. You know, like you were talking before about using more of the space up there and making another print here or something. I don't know. You're, I don't not, know. you're not scheduling your next one. It's month, not right? scheduled. I think John, for example, he's got his next trip planned. Already and planned. One, and the one, and and the one, one after. after. <laughs> I keep telling myself, I need to go someplace else. Uh, like I haven't... But you're trapped now. You're in this thing. You know? <laughs> we hear this all the time. People used to go to a different country each year. Uh -huh. They come to Japan one year and then that's it. That's it. They are now trapped. <laughs> Back to Japan. This is my story. Yeah. It's a good travel. You just go to different countries, been in Europe, all over the place. Mm -hmm. Come here once. I hear real it. estate's really inexpensive here. Not right here. Well, not right not here. Right here. No, 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 but uh, no, 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 no. there's inexpensive no. real estate no. to be had. All of the so. things, of course. Anyway, instead of babbling, let's just shut this down. Karen, thank you again for coming back. For coming back. Oh, thank you so have much. A good, have a good time next week up at the uh, paper place. And I, I'll be interested in getting your report on the, the sheets of paper All that right. you make. So let's uh, bring up the outside you, you view. You want to do this? Yep. Yes. This Here lady knows how to handle this. Everyone. Anything interesting see. happening out there? Uh, people walking by. We had a black car earlier that disgorged some people with suitcases. Oh, Jeff and the down across the street. Yeah. yeah. And uh, everybody says thank you and bye. Okay. Right, done. Thanks again, people. I'll see you. Oh, there's a need to report. Wait, today's, today's Saturday. Saturday. I'll be here Monday as normal, and hopefully this block will be finished by then, and I'll be starting the next project, which will be instant Bye-bye. Bye for now. Three, two, one. Oh, baby.